Hello, and welcome to the UPI Open House Day. My name is Marshall, and I work at UPI as a first year advisor and recruiter. We're so excited to welcome you to, to our fall open house. Throughout this event, you're gonna meet people from all different parts of campus who want to make your first year UPI a great one. For the fall of 2022, UPI will return to pre-COVID classroom operations while maintaining some online options for student flexibility. As for the winter of 2022, UPI will also return to normal while maintaining some online courses to support some students that are not able to be here in PEI. We will continue to monitor the situation and follow CPHO guidelines. And if you're watching this video premiere on Friday, we have advisors in the chat who are willing to answer all of your questions. If you're watching this video later, you can email us at apply at upi.ca. First up, we're gonna have Hannah, who is gonna show you how to complete the application process. Hello everybody, my name's Hannah, and I'm a recruiter and first year advisor at the University of Prince Edward Island. Today I'll be walking you through how to apply to UPI. So we're starting here on the UPI website, and you can click this button here that says apply, or you can type in www.upi.ca slash apply. So we'll scroll down, there's some instructions here on how to apply, but if you go all the way to the bottom, you can click start your application. So when you registered for this open house event, you made an account through the UPI website. If you save those credentials, you can use those again for your application. If you didn't save those credentials, you can create a new account by clicking this here, this create account button. So Joe Panther is um, our mascot. I'll be using his account to sign in. So we'll go ahead and sign in with his credentials here. Joe Panther. And Joe Panther does not currently have any applications. So you can see all of your in progress applications here. Um, since he doesn't have any applications yet, we're gonna go ahead and start a new one by clicking this blue button. And a lot of you will likely be applying to undergraduate programs, so that is something you'd be applying to right out of high school. Um, to do that, you'll select start a new undergraduate application. And most of you are probably looking to apply to fall 2022, so we'll just hit next here. So when you made your accounts to sign up for the open house event. Uh, you put in your first name, last name, email address, so a lot of that information will be carried over from your account, but if there's any missing information, just fill it in. We're going to put in Joe Panther's phone number here, and his address was filled in from his um, previous account. If that's not filled in already, you can go ahead and do that. And if this is your permanent address, then you just leave that as no. Save and continue. So for demographics, the first thing we're looking for here is your social insurance number. So this is important if you are an island resident and you're applying to the George Coles bursary. Um, so you're going to want to put in your Canadian social insurance number so that we can prove that you are an island resident and you are eligible for the George Coles scholarship. If you don't have that right now, that's okay. You can visit us at the registrar's office and bring in proof of your social insurance number. And if you're not a uh, Canadian applicant, you don't have to worry about doing that at all. Then you're going to go ahead and put in your date of birth. and your immigration status. So if you're a Canadian citizen, you'll select that, but there are other options there too. And you'll put in your province of residence. So Joe Panther is an island student. And then if you'd like to make an Aboriginal decoration, you can do that as well. We'll save and continue. So for your academic plans, this is where you will um, put in your plans for your future studies. We selected undergraduate for this application, so that is the only academic level available to us. And for admit type, if you're coming directly from high school, you'll select that. If you are taking a break and continuing your studies later, you can select undergraduate. And if you're a transfer student or a returning UPI student, you can select one of those options. And then you will pick if you are entering as a full-time student or a part-time student. So 
full-time students take three to five courses per semester and part-time students take one or two courses per semester. So Joe Panther will be applying as a full-time student. And here you get to choose your intended major or program and there's a long list here so take a look through the list and see if you're interested in any of these programs and majors. Um, Joe Panther is interested in a Bachelor of Science with a major in Biology. And his second choice is a Bachelor of Science with a major in Chemistry. If you're unsure about the admissions requirements for these programs, you can check out the web pages on the UPI website, or you can contact us in First Year Advising and Recruitment Office to double check that you are on track to enter these programs. And he is all set for the fall 2022 semester. If you're interested in on-campus housing, you can select yes here as well. So that would be to live in residence, and there will be more information about that later in our open house. If you require any accommodations or access accessibility um, accommodations at UPI, you can select yes here. There's a list on this page for things that we accommodate. Save and continue. Then for academics, you'll be selecting your high school from a list. So the way that this works is for high school one, you will start typing in your high school. So let's say that Joe Panther went to Colonel Gray. You'll type that in there and click search. And Colonel Gray Senior High School will come up down here. You'll select the box, click select, and then that is selected as Joe Panther's high school. Then you'll go in and put in your attendance information. So he started in September of 2019 and he will be graduating like many of you in June of 2022. So he's not yet graduated, but that's okay. You can still apply with your in progress transcript. So we're just gonna go ahead and check if he has the English proficiency, if English um, is his mother tongue or his um, primary language of education, then he'll select yes for this. If you're an international student or English is not your first language, you might select no, and then you will select your um, English proficiency test that you will later submit. So we'll click save and continue. This is asking for who Joe Panther lives with. So Joe Panther lives with his parents. We're looking for an emergency contact here, so we'll put in Joe Panther's mother's information, Jill Panther. And then you can fill in phone number and email address as well. And she has the same address as Joe. So we'll click save and continue. And believe it or not, that is actually the last page of the application. Um, here we have a few certifications that you have to go through before you submit your application. So just that you understand that you um, are required to disclose your attendance to any high schools, colleges, or universities um, as part of your application, that you um, acknowledge that all of your statements are true, and that you, if you are accepted to the University of Prince Edward Island, that you will abide by the university regulations. So if you select yes to all of those, you can put in your electronic signature here with the signature date and I'll scroll all the way down. You can preview your application before submitting it. And just scroll through and make sure all of the information is correct. And then you scroll down to the bottom and click submit application. Then it'll take you to the payment page and we are offering a promo code as a part of this open house. So that will show up later um, at the end of this open house event, you can copy that promo code and put it in here on your application. So this is exactly where you're going to paste your promo code and then you'll hit apply and that that is all you need for this stage of the application. The next step is to send us your official transcripts. We'll need your official transcripts sent directly from your high school to us via email at registrar at upi.ca or to our mailing address found at upi.ca slash apply. You can send us your grade 11 and your in progress grade 12 marks for conditional acceptance, but we will eventually need to see your final transcripts as well for an official offer. 
If you have any questions, you can email us at apply at upi.ca. Thanks, Hannah. That was great. Just a reminder that we have recruiters in the chat who will be able to answer any questions you may have. Next, we'll have Aaron, who will give you all some more information on the scholarship process and what you need to do once applications open next month. Hello, my name is Erin and I'm the Scholarships, Awards, and Financial Aid Officer at UPEI. As an entering student, there are two types of awards applicable to you, automatic awards and application-based awards. First are automatic awards. The Celebrating Student Achievement Awards include guaranteed entrance scholarships. They are for students entering UPEI directly from high school in their graduating year. You will automatically qualify for a guaranteed entrance scholarship based on your grade 12 average, which is calculated on the five courses used for admission into the university. Based on that average, you may be eligible for up to $3,000 in your first year. UPEI's application-based scholarships and awards are ones you actually have to apply for. You can find a full list of scholarships and application forms for the entrance award cycle on our website. Available in December, our main entrance award cycle application form contains a variety of awards based on academics, leadership, and financial need. We also have entrance awards with a separate application process, as they require additional materials like a personal statement or reference letter. New awards may be added each year, so updated links will be available on the scholarships website in December. Whether you're filling out the Entrance Award Cycle application form or any of the separate Award Cycle application forms, a good tip to remember is that it's important to be attentive to the award criteria. Tailor your submission to the awards you have selected and treat sections like the Student Life form or Personal Statement as you would a resume by demonstrating how you best meet the award criteria. And last but not least, note that the deadline for scholarships and award applications is March 1st. Ensure your application forms and all required materials listed are submitted to our office on or before that day. The best way to do so is by email to scholarships with an S at upei.ca. You can also reach us at this email address with any questions you may have throughout the process. Good luck on your applications and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, Aaron. Be sure to take the time to fill out your scholarship application. So for those of you who are interested in living on campus next year, we're going to hear from Laura, who's the Assistant Manager of Residence Life. Hi, everyone. My name is Laura, and I am the Assistant Manager for Residence Life here at UPEI. So you're not just going to university to learn a bunch of stuff. You're also going for the experience to live with people who are pursuing the same goals as you and to make friends and connections with future leaders in business and science and culture. And the best way to do that is to live on campus. You will meet so many people and make incredible friendships with epic memories. And residence at UPEI is so much fun. Check out our room tours on YouTube. And if you can, visit us in person. Our residence rooms are huge with double beds and high ceilings in Andrew Hall. We have a dining hall connected to that building so you can eat in your pajamas and you're so close to your classes. Or if you want a more budget-friendly, traditional-style residence, you can have a roommate in Bernadine Hall. And then in your second year, our new residence will be open, which is literally the biggest building on PEI. And you can live on the ninth floor and watch the cruise ships come into the harbor from your room. But before that, PEI will be hosting the 2023 Canada Games with the Athletes Village right on campus in that new residence building. So students who live in residence do better in their classes, it's a fact. And I hope I've convinced you that residence at UPEI is a great option. It doesn't cost anything to apply to residence. Once you've been accepted to UPEI and paid your tuition deposit, just jump on our website upei.ca slash residence and you'll see the link to apply. And if you don't know many people coming to UPEI, you can use the Roomies feature to search for people in the same program or with the same lifestyle as you to share a suite or a bedroom with. If you have any other questions about residence life, feel free to contact me at residence at upei.ca. See you later. Thanks, Laura. Be sure to apply early if you're interested in living on campus. Next, we're gonna hear from Anne with Student Services. She's gonna to touch on how we can help you throughout your academic journey here at UPI. 
Hello, my name is Ann Bartlett and I'm the Interim Director at UPEI Student Affairs. Welcome to UPEI. So glad that you decided to join us. And while you're here at UPEI, I really want you to make use of the services that we have in Student Affairs because they can really help make that change from high school or wherever you're coming from into university life at UPEI. So some of our services, we have personal counseling. So our counselors will meet with you with anything ranging from just feeling a little bit homesick or feeling a little bit off and just not yourself and you just want to talk to somebody about that. Or maybe you have a diagnosed mental health illness and our counselors are very comfortable to talk with you and help you work through that with them. So whatever the range of support you need with your mental health, we're here to support that. Um, with our academic supports, we have academic coaching. So maybe it's you're just having a little bit of trouble adjusting from the high school way of doing schoolwork to the university um, methods and, and strategies. Well, we can work with you on that and help you with that time management or how to take notes more effectively or how to read a university textbook more effectively. Our academic coaches can meet with you one-on-one -on -one and can help you adjust to university life that way. We have the Writing Centre. So again, writing at the university level takes it to a higher uh, standard and a higher level of writing and research. And our student tutors there would be great to work with to make sure you're confident with those papers that you're submitting for grades. We also have accessibility services. So if you have a diagnosed learning disability, um, you are welcome to come and meet with us and our team in accessibility services can work with your um, uh, diagnosis and provide the accommodations that you need to help you succeed at UPEI. We also do a lot with um, kind of social and spiritual and cultural um, adjustments and supports for students. So our Mauiomi Indigenous Student Center uh, is there to help our Indigenous students and it's just a place to come and relax and, and um, get some supports and help uh, with some uh, Mi'kmaq culture and, and uh, if you want to come and chat with our Elder Judy, um, you're welcome to do that as well. Our Chaplaincy Center, um, you'll have to go and meet Sister Sue um, and Lauren. They're there to greet you and they provide a space just to come and relax. Uh, they do ser um, host Mass once a week, but then other religious, religions and different faiths can come as well. Um, there's different prayer rooms and um, another big part of, of the Chaplaincy Center is the food bank. Um, Sister Sue is very big on feeding the body as well as the soul. So whether it's soup for the soul or using the food bank if needed, drop by the Chaplaincy Center and Sister Sue will be happy to meet you. And then we also have the Campus Life Program. And that's a team of volunteer student leaders in the evenings that will be putting on different events uh, just to help you connect and meet people from all over the world. Uh, so if you're interested in doing some social connecting and becoming a part of a, a group of people that come and hang out um, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights, come up to fifth floor, Dalton Hall, and uh, just be a part of the Campus Life program. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, if you have any questions about any of these, or if, even if you're not sure which service will be best for you, just email Michelle, our admin assistant, at studentserve.upei.ca. Studentserve.upei.ca. And Michelle will be happy to connect you with the right person. I hope you enjoy your time at UPEI, and remember, reach out if we can help you in any way. Thank you. Hi guys, my name is Keyshawn and I'll be giving you guys a tour of Dalton Hall today. Now Dalton Hall has a lot of student services that every student should know about. On the ground level we have accessibility services. We have the Registrar's Office, International Office as well as First Year Advisement and Recruitment as well as Student Affairs. So come follow me and we're going to learn a lot about Dalton today. So here we are on the second floor of Dalton Hall. Over here we have the Registrar's Office and it's a very important place for students to know. If you have any interest in paying your tuition, checking up on a scholarship, adding or dropping a class, coming here on the second floor right to your right as you enter is the place to be. 
Over here, right down this hallway, we have our career services team. Um, if you are at all interested in uh, career counseling, if you want to find out more about our co-op program, our work integrated learning experience, through this office and down this hall, uh, the staff here is happy to help and they are a great resource if you want to know more about these services. Down these stairs and also through the accessible entrance through here, we have the Office of Accessibility. And if you guys have any questions or concerns about accessibility itself, these guys are an amazing resource to come to um, and they can provide you with all the assistance and the information that you do need. So now we're on the fourth floor of Dalton. And basically the fourth floor of Dalton is split into two very separate but equally important offices. We have the Office of First Year Advisement and Recruitment. If you are a first year student, uh, if you have any questions about adding or dropping a class, you want to see an academic advisor, you can come here for support. Uh, you can go right to that desk there and they can give you the help that you need. We also have the international office here as well. So if you are an international student, if you have questions concerning your study permit, um, questions about uh, you know just international life here at the university, you can come to this desk here and you can find the help that you do need. And our lovely student assistants will be here to help you. So now we're gonna head up to the fifth floor, student affairs. So here we are on fifth floor Dalton, and this is where you can find student affairs. Now student affairs also offers many services. We have academic advising. So if you are no longer a first year student and you do need academic advising, you will come up here to the fifth floor rather than fourth floor Dalton. And here you can find the help and support that you do need. We also offer personal counseling. If you do need any of those services, these guys are an amazing resource. Further down this hallway, we also have the Mamiomi Center. Now, even if you aren't a student who is indigenous, you can still come up here to learn about the culture. Um, these guys are incredibly friendly, they're greatly informative, and they would always love to welcome new students. Thanks, Anne, and thanks, Keyshawn, for showing you inside Dalton Hall. We're getting near the end of our virtual open house this morning with only a couple talking points left. Next, you're gonna hear a little bit more on student life and what it's like at UPI and how you can get involved. Hi everyone, my name is Simone and I work with Student Affairs here at UPEI. At UPEI there are lots of opportunities to get involved on campus and one of the amazing programs I want to tell you about is our Campus Life program. Every Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday nights from 6 to 10 p.m. on the fifth floor of Dalton Hall, we open up a lounge area for students to come out and meet new friends and hang out together. It's a really great way to get involved on campus, build community, and to make friends. It's all put on by students as well, and we have all kinds of fun nights and events, from just relaxed chill nights to hang out or study, to games nights, and bigger events like karaoke nights, open mics, and even trivia. A lot of students will come participate and meet people in their first year and then potentially become student leaders for the program as well. It's really fun and very unique to UPEI too. Our student leaders are amazing and really welcoming to new students. In a lot of ways, it's a home away from home for students. And in fact, we've had a lot of UPEI alum say that they've made friends and connections for life through this program. So I hope you all come to UPEI and get a chance to check out the Campus Life program. You can follow us on Facebook or Instagram at UPEI Campus Life to check out all the kinds of events we offer or to ask any questions. Next up, Emma is going to tell us about the Maui Center. Quay, hello. My name is Emma and I am the lead student assistant at the Maui Indigenous Student Center. The word Maui means gathering place, and the Maui Center, as the name suggests, is a place for Indigenous students and their allies to come together. The Center's Lounge offers a place for students to get together, socialize, study, and relax. The purpose of the Maui Center is to support all Indigenous students throughout their time at UPEI from acceptance until their graduation. The Maui Center provides cultural, personal, and academic support that helps promote personal and cultural growth. The Maui Center hosts group programming and activities both online and in person that help in promoting Indigenous student engagement, sharing of Indigenous culture, and coming together as a community. We look forward to meeting you and working with you to promote our diverse Indigenous student body. 
Well, Alan, thank you. Next up, for international applicants, you're going to hear from our recruiters, Basil and Chloe, that we're going to give you a little bit more information on what steps you'll need to do in order to attend UPEI. Hello everyone and welcome to UPEI. My name is Basil Melki. And I am Chloe Oliphant. We are both first year advisors and recruiters at UPEI. Chloe, as an international student, what kind of documents might be required from me? So, as an international student, if you're from a non-English speaking country, we'll require you an English score. And if you don't have the score, which is required if it is too low, if you did not have the chance because we know because of COVID there is some um, issues into getting into doing the test of IELTS and TOEFL. So you could enroll in our English academic preparation program at UPEI. When would be a good time for an international student to apply to UPEI? So I would recommend you guys to apply as soon as you get your high school result because it will take some time to process and because of other application you have to get your letter of acceptance as soon as possible. And when is a good time to apply for my study permit or visa? As soon as you get your letter of acceptance because even due to COVID right now the processing time may vary and can be very long and you need to be on campus for your schooling so just make sure you apply as soon as possible. If you have any other questions about the application process, please email inte at upei.ca. And again, welcome to UPEI. Thank you so much for joining us today for this virtual open house event. We hope you learned something new at UPEI and are excited to start classes next September. If you have any questions at all, you can reach out to our first year advisement and recruitment office at apply at upei.ca. If you happen to be on campus, we're on the fourth floor of Dalton Hall. At the bottom of the screen now, you should see the application waiver code. Be sure to include that code at the end of your application so that you can have your application fee waived. Thanks again and hope to see you all on campus soon.